The next supplementary lesson is all about surface area. Uh, our standard says that we can use real, or solve real life problems and mathematical applications involving area, surface area, and volume. So here we go. This is called a net, a two-dimensional representation of a solid. If I took a solid and cut it apart and laid it flat, what would it look like? And if I folded it back up, what would I get? Well, here I have three rectangular faces, and then I have two triangles, which tells me if I made this go back up again into a three-dimensional shape, I would get a triangular prism with three rectangular pieces and two triangles top and bottom. Or it might look like a tent if I laid it flat this way. But either way, it's a triangular prism. A prism has two parallel bases, in this case, triangles. Bases do not have to be top and bottom. They could be on two ends if it's laying flat. Here we have a lovely rectangular prism. If I cut this apart and laid it flat, I would have four rectangular pieces and a top and bottom rectangle. So I would have that shape and then two of those and another over here. If I roll that up and taped it together, I would get that box back again. That would be what my net would look like. So I could find the surface area by cutting it apart, measuring, and finding all six faces and adding them up. That'd be a lot of work. Or I can use a formula, which says the surface area of any prism is 2 capital B plus PH. 2 capital B plus PH, where capital B equals area of the base. P equals perimeter of the base. And H is the height of the prism. So here we go, we've got a lovely rectangular prism. Kind of hard to see. I'm gonna make it a little darker. This side is three, this is four, and this is 12. Now, surface area equals two capital B plus PH. We always start with our formula, that hasn't changed. Capital B. Area of the base, length times width, 3 times 4, 12. Perimeter of the base. I could use my formula 2L plus 2W, or I could just be that teeny tiny little ant and walk all the way around the base. 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4, 14. We substitute those in. Surface area equals 2 times 12 plus perimeter 14 times height of 12. So my surface area is 24 plus 288. No, that's not right, is it? 
144, oh, 14 times 12. Oh, not divide. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness. 168. That didn't look right. That's why we have calculators. Add 192 centimeters squared because it's area. Again, our standard says that I can solve real life and mathematical problems with surface area. That's what we need to do. And it says use formulas. So you knew, if you have the formula, can you figure out area of the base, perimeter of the base, plug and chug? Well, let's see if we can do it with a triangular prism. Now, this is a triangular prism, and I know that because the only two faces that are parallel are triangles. This one back here and the one up front here. This is not its base, even though it's sitting on it. There's no parallel base to match it up here. So, surface area is 2 capital B plus PH. So, my base is 1 half little bh, because I need to know area of that triangular base. Now, this is where it gets tricky. My base is 12. Now, I don't know the height because I don't. So, I'm going to give you that height. We're going to worry about finding it later on, but I'm going to give you that height is 19. So, that is a 19. So, 1 half times 12 times 19 114. My perimeter of that base is 20 plus 20 plus 12. Three sides to the triangle. 52. So now we substitute. Surface area is 2 times 114 plus perimeter 52 times. Now the height of the pyramid or prism is not the 19, that's the height of the base. The height is this distance, because remember, it's like it tipped over. So we have to do height. Sometimes height is on the bottom, 25. So surface area is 228 plus 52 times 25. 1,300. Add those together. 1,528. And our label is feet. So it is feet to the second power. That is surface area of prisms. 2 capital B plus PH. Now, if I'm a cylinder, like my coffee mug or a, a can of green beans, how much metal does it take to make that can of green beans? That's surface area. And instead of perimeter of the base, it's circumference of the base because that's what we call the perimeter of a circle. So it's basically the exact same thing, but you use circumference. Now, a couple things we got to know. If I cut this apart, this lateral surface around the middle is just going to be a giant rectangle. And then I'm going to have a circular top and a circular bottom when I roll it back up. Now, this is the height of my cylinder, and this length here is going to be the same as the circumference, the distance around the circle. Now, 
here's some things we have to remember about circles. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Circumference of a circle is pi times d. Diameter. Now remember, all the way across is diameter. Halfway across is radius from the center out. And so one diameter is equal to two radii. One diameter equals two times the radius. R squared is not the same as 2R. It's R times R. Pi, 3.14159265358985, etc. Okay? Now, here we go. Are you ready? We have this lovely cylinder. It's laying on its side. That's okay. Surface area equals 2 capital B plus CH. Now, the area of the base is pi r squared. So it's going to be pi, and we're going to leave it pi because we can, and it's going to make life so much easier. My radius is 8. 8 squared is 64. We're just going to call that 64 pi. Circumference is pi times d. Well, my diameter, if the radius is 8, diameter is all the way across 16, so pi times 16. So, I'm going to substitute those in. So I have 2 times 64 pi plus 16 pi times a height of 11. So, this gives me 128 pi plus 16 times 11, goodness, 176 pi. Now we're going to add those together. And get 304 pi. And now all I have to do is multiply that with 1 on my calculator. 304 pi. I get a big long answer. I'm going to round it to the nearest. What should we round to? Tenth. 955.0 inches squared. Now your directions on your work will either say nearest tenth, nearest hundredth, nearest whole number. So to the nearest tenth, that would be that answer. Those are how to find surface area of a cylinder. Now, when we talk composite figures, I have a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. And I want to know the area of them, surface area, together. So, major hint, find surface area of the solids and then subtract the faces that are not on the outside. So, starting with the top of my house. 2 capital B plus PH. My base is a triangle. 1 half BH, little b. Now, this is a base of 8. Height of 3. So, 12. Perimeter of that base is 8 and 5 
and 5. Because if this side's 5, the other side is 5. So 5 and 5 and 8. 18. So I have 2 times 12 plus 18. And then this height here, which is horizontal, of 10. So 24 plus 180. Surface area of... 204 square feet. Now, this rectangular prism two capital B plus PH. Now this base is eight by ten. So capital B equals eight times ten, eighty. My perimeter of that base, 8 plus 10 plus 8 plus 10, 36. So 2 times 80 plus 36 times 5, because now this has a height of 5, because I counted this as my base, 8 by 10. So 160 plus 180 an area of 340 square feet. So together, 340 plus 204, 544 square feet. However, we have this base plan right here that doesn't show. So this eight by 10 rectangle is covered up in both the top and the bottom. So 8 by 10 is 80, and I have two of those. So I've got 160 square feet that's not going to get on the surface. It's covered up. So if I subtract that 160 off, 384 square feet is the actual surface area. So, looking at our standard again, are we confident that I can use story problems, world, real world problems, to find surface area of prisms and cylinders? So the I cans, I can use two-dimensional nets to represent three-dimensional solids. I can find surface area of rectangular and triangular prisms and cylinders. And I can solve real-life problems.